In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a very interesting pattern if you're building distributed systems that use messaging. And that pattern is dead letter queues. I'll explain what dead letter queues are, why you need them, and how you can implement them using Amazon SQS. I'll start from the drawing board to explain what a dead letter queue is. So here, we have our regular queue. Let me make the text a bit larger. And what we want to do is to take our message and send it into the queue. Now in the happy path, the message comes out of the queue. And essentially this means that some application successfully consumed it. And after that completes, we send an acknowledgement to SQS and it's removed from the queue. And there are no traces of this message left and we can continue on with our application. Now, of course, the happy path isn't all too realistic and it's almost certain that this message won't always be handled successfully. So in that case, what happens is this message gets returned back to the queue where we can try to process it again. And the idea behind this retry is solving for any transient failures. And most of the time when we do this, this message will be processed successfully and we can remove it from the queue. Now let's say we run into some more serious problem, like some service that we are depending on being down, maybe some infrastructure component isn't responding, or even worse, we introduced a bug into our application that prevents this message from ever being processed successfully until we fix the bug that is. So what's going to happen is this message gets sent into the queue, an application is going to pull it and try to consume it, and it's going to fail because we have this bug, whatever that may be. And we return the message back to the queue and retry, and essentially we keep retrying to process this message until that bug is eventually fixed. And to prevent overloading the queue and our servers from unsuccessfully processing a message, we introduce an additional queue into the system. So let me add a copy. And what this queue represents is a so-called dead letter queue. In short, I'm going to write it as DLQ. So what our flow looks like now is let's say we are retrying this for the third time and we send this message into the queue. It gets picked up by some of our consumers and the consumer fails again. So instead of returning it into the queue, we can send this message into the dead letter queue. So let me make that obvious. And now it's inside of the dead letter queue. And what this allows us to do is keep handling the messages that we are able to handle successfully and it doesn't overload the system when we run into some failures. Now we keep stacking the messages into the dead letter queue and what this allows us to do is to fix whatever the bug is that is causing the problem and then we can retry the messages that we have inside of this queue and AWS has a very cool feature called redrive that allows us to take the messages in the dead letter queue and send them back to the original queue to be processed by our application. I'll show you how we can implement this in practice in just a moment. But one more thing I want to highlight is you will need some sort of monitoring into the dead letter queue so that you can get a notification from your alerting system when you get too many messages in the dead letter queue. This should notify you that there is some sort of problem and you should probably look into that and figure out what is causing the spike of messages in the dead letter queue. Now let's go into AWS and I'll show you how we can set this up. So I already have some queues configured, but let me show you what we can do when we create a new queue. I won't bother with adding any values for now. I want to show you this part here, which is called dead letter queue. By default, it's disabled, but if you turn it on, you can choose some other queue in SQS that is going to act as the dead letter queue for the one you have configured. So because I have two other queues here, I can configure one of them as the dead letter queue, and then I can configure what is the maximum number of receives that this queue is going to support before sending the message into the dead letter queue. So what I want to do here is actually create the queue that's going to be my dead letter queue. So let me call this AWS messaging dev orders DLQ to represent that this is a dead letter queue. And I'm going to leave all the other options with their default values. So let me go ahead and create this queue. And for the time being, we won't use it. I first want to show you what happens when we publish and consume a message with the current setup. So what I have right now is one SQS queue configured with a respective SNS topic and the subscription between them. So let me go into my .NET application. And here I have a .NET 9 application. It's using the AWS messaging library. This is a nice little option traction from the AWS team, which allows you to easily publish and consume messages from SQS, SNS, or EventBridge. And how it works is by configuring two components. One is the publishers, where you can define an SQS or SNS publisher. In this case, I have an SNS publisher and the type of message that I will be publishing. I also need to specify the URL for my topic, which means I need to know my resource ID ahead of time. And the second component I need here is a polar, which is going to poll my SQS queue. And I also need to be able to provide the 
EQ URL. Then I can connect a respective message handler to my message type. If we go into the message handler, you'll see that I get a message envelope containing the original event that I published. And then I can see how I want to handle this event. In this case, I'm just logging some telemetry data and writing an information log before returning a successful message processing status. I also have an open telemetry configuration with some tracing setup. And I have a simple endpoint where I can send an order DTO and this will publish an order created event. So let's say we have a bug in our message handler where if the order has more than let's say 10 items we can successfully process this and i'm going to just explain this by throwing a new exception and i'll say failed to process order we don't need to be too specific here i just need to introduce a failure condition so that i can show you what happens without a dead letter queue so in this case we expect our handler to fail to log an error and return a message process status of fail so let me start the application and you can see i have my resource up and running if i go into the distributed traces we currently don't have any now i'll jump into postman where i prepared a request that contains more than 10 line items and if we send this type of request we'll be able to successfully publish this to sns but our handler shouldn't execute now i'm going to press send and i'll jump back to my aspire dashboard and here we can start seeing some traces show up where we have our initial request to the orders endpoint which is going to publish the message to sns and then we have a trace here which is this one which attempts to handle this message now this actually fails to handle it and you can see another attempt at handling the same message here and here and essentially every 20 seconds which is how long the long polling lasts from our sqs polar we will attempt to retry this message and this is going to continue indefinitely until we by some miracle figure out that we have a bug and fix this or we can configure a dead letter queue and this message is going to instantly be routed there so let's see how we can introduce that now so if i go into the queue which i'm using to process these messages i can scroll down to the dead letter queue section and you can see that we don't have any configure so i'll say edit and i have to go down to dead letter queue and click enabled i'll choose the dedicated queue which we created aws messaging dev orders dlq as my dead letter queue and let's say that we are conservative and we want to allow up to three receives in this queue before we route the message into our dead letter queue so i'll go ahead and persist this and now we have a dead letter queue configured if i go back to the queues and i refresh this you can see that we are currently polling for one message which is why we have one here and after this reaches three attempts we're going to reroute this message into the dead letter queue if i go into the traces i can see one attempt here and let's assume that this was the first one and if i see one more which should fail then we can expect to see this message show up inside of our dead letter queue so if i refresh this now you can see that we have one message available inside of our dl queue now to make this more interesting i'm going to publish a bunch of messages from postman just so that we have more messages inside of our dead letter queue and now in total i have 17 messages inside of my dead letter queue so what can i do with the messages inside well aws has a feature called dl queue redrive which allows us to take the messages inside of the dead letter queue and redrive them to the source queue another option is to redrive them to some custom destination where you can choose a different queue if you want to route the messages there and you also have the ability to control how fast these messages will be retrieved. So you can use some sensible default value which SQS is going to configure on its own or you can set the maximum number of messages per second. So I can set this to let's say five messages per second or I can decide to use the system optimized value. Let's say I want to use this option. You can also inspect what the messages are inside of the queue by polling for the messages and if we take a look inside we can see that the contents inside contain our order created event with a large number of items inside which is what caused the failure now let's go back to the application and let's say we fix this by just omitting this if statement here and redeploy our application and if i start the application now it will be able to handle any messages in the happy path we can confirm this by publishing a message and then observing the state in the queue and we should see that we are able to successfully process this but i'll place a breakpoint here and go back to my dead letter queue and let's say that we are now ready to start the dlq redrive i'll use the system optimized value and i want to redrive this to the source queue so i'll say start dlq redrive and you'll see that we get context about this operation here where we can track the status you can see that it's currently in progress and if i jump into visual studio you'll see that we immediately hit this breakpoint and if i keep pressing continue we'll keep hitting this breakpoint for until we exhaust all of the messages that we currently have in the dead letter 
regular queue. So I'll press continue and let's go back to my Aspire dashboard. And if I jump into the distributed traces, you can see a bunch of traces here, which represent successfully processing the message. So if I filter this based on the contents, let me go back to the traces and I'll say processing messages. You can see that we have a bunch of logs here, which are the messages that we redraw from the dead letter queue. Also, if I go back to SQS and I refresh this, you should see that we no longer have any messages available in either our original queue or the respective dead letter queue. And this is how you can start using dead letter queues. I think the SQS support for this is especially well polished with the DLQ redrive. And one more thing I'd like to note is that you can't use this option if your queue isn't configured as a dead letter queue. So you can see that this button is disabled on my original queue. But if I go into my dead letter queue, I can start a redrive assuming I have any messages inside. If you want to grab the source code for this video, you can do that for free from the pinned comment that's going to be right below this video. And if you want to learn more about infrastructure as code and how you can use that to configure your SQS queues and subscribe them to any topics, then I recommend watching this video next. Make sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, stay awesome.